per super small dungeon. This is the second. Take one. Sealed, said Percy. Go on. We'll bow the lost black tank engine and the talk issues by Mr. Christopher James Rush. Chapter One The Engine Who Escaped. Mr. and Mrs. Denquish of Number 10, Metro Drive, are proud to say they were working fine, thank you very much, because they just can't stand things running low. They have a railway, which is a tip. Engines that come here have to put green waste in it whenever they got full trucks. Mr. Denquish was the manager of the tip, checking in the waste delivery, and Mrs. and Mrs. Denquish was secretary. They have a son called Drunk. He always drinks, which is just water, and he goes to school, sort of. He got expelled when he was caught from a school's camera that he took teachers' treats like chocolate. He escaped before any of the school people would catch him, but his parents got a letter to tell them that they can't have him anymore. So instead of schoolwork, he learned from his parents, which he was allowed to help run their property with cleaning the weeds when they grew in the track. The Denquishes had a perfect life. They do, however, have a secret, and their greatest fear was that someone would discover it some years ago. There was an engine they had lost. Her name was Rosie, who escaped for not wanting to take in children who have no parents. You see, 
The Hasidim, you guessed it, it's an orphanage. They had none of them that had no interest of coming here, so they pretended they had some engine that was taking the orphanage train. But that didn't work. Our story starts when Mr. Denkrish was visiting the railway's community. He was heading to his car and driving out of Metro Drive when he caught sight of something peculiar. A pink engine was standing but he wasn't looking at Rosie. He saw the black pony who was looking at something. It was looking at a sign that said Metal Drive. No, that can't be right. Ponies can't read signs. Giving his head a little shake, he drove on. As he parked his car at the community hall, he couldn't help notice that there seemed to be a lot of engines that were standing about. They were talking about something. A, a green engine with another were talking excitedly. Mr. Denkrish couldn't understand the word they were saying. Trying to ignore them, he went in the hall. Ow! He sat at the empty table, which was empty. It usually was full, but it wasn't today. There wasn't a single person. He found a letter telling him that the hall was going to be taken down. Outside, the engines were talking still. Mr. Denkrish looked out at them, wondering if they had planned this. He was about to go back to his empty table seat, which he wasn't, and was just needing to find where his colleagues were, when he caught a few words of what the engines were saying. Did you hear about Rose's brother, Wilbo? Yeah. He escaped Mr. Denkris's brother's railway and is needing to hide somewhere. Mr. Denkrish stopped dead. Fear flooded him. He was about to find a phone to call his home number when he changed his mind. He went into a train of thoughts, in fact a deep train of thoughts, thinking, no, he was being stupid, Wilbo seems an unusual name, nobody ever knew how a new name would come up there was no need to tell Mrs. Denkrish because she always gets upset at any mention about engines that have gone missing. Come to think of it, he didn't know that Wilbo was a brother to that pink engine. Let's escape them. He wondered if Rosie 
had started a family. He also thought about how the name Wilbo had come. He was sure if there were any people that had that weird name. There haven't been. It might have been Willie or Welsh. But all the same, his engines. Odd. He went to he went to find his colleagues, but he couldn't find where the next hall was, because this was the only hall England had. Was there something not going on? He went home, having decided he should report this to the police. When he got home, he met the wife at the door. It was no good. He had to tell her this affair. Ah, uh, Mendel, dear, you haven't heard from Rosie, have you? he asked. As he had expected, she said in an outrage. No? Why? Uh, some affair that is happening, and when I just came out of the drive, she was standing there, this pony. So? Well, I was needing to call the police to find her, but there's an engine we might hopefully get to take the orphanage train named Rubo. That seems... All right. That's what we must get. You do realize we are in the middle of business. Yes, and we have to keep it alive, but don't you think we should let the police know where he is? No, where to find him ourselves, but we must find Rosie. While they were talking, they didn't notice Rosie was spying on them, and so was the back pony. They have heard everything. They sneaked away. Finding a railway that was in an abandoned quarry which many engines use. Percy and Thomas were there. They were waiting with Wilbur. We've got your brother ready. Tom has been asked to drive him, said Percy, and he's ready to do this task, which we have to let him do, said Thomas. Hello, Percy, said Wilbur. First time I'm to meet you. Hello, Wilbur. Good to see you. Now listen. You've got the Denquish people wanting to take you to their place. They have an orphanage coach, which is not for engines with feelings. I refuse to do it for them after they mocked said to me about being lucky to escape scrap when my class have been taken to the melting shed. So to pay them back, I steamed away, ignoring them, shouting me to come back. You must know, Lobo, that your plot is to be with the darkness. Nightmare Moon will explain what she's done with the Denquish's house. While Mr. Denquish was away, I put a curse in the house and kidnapped drunk.
putting him in jail when he was turned with the darkness. They'll be fussing to the police about their son in jail, but when they take him out, they'll be paying you back thinking you did it on purpose. They don't know me or your driver. If they ask you if you know how drunk was kidnapped, say you don't know. Now, we better leave you in this railway, where she will meet you in the Hill Branch line. Good luck. Thanks. I remember when our classmates have got scrapped, which in my opinion are part of life. But it has to be due to Dr. Brabham Beeching's madness. The three engines and the black pony left when the day was breaking. Wilbur was resting in his siding of the abandoned quarry, waiting for the den crushers to find him. Tom hid in a cupboard somewhere in the cab. He didn't want to be seen. They heard a whisper of Nightmare Moon saying this word. To Wilbur, the engine who escaped. End of chapter one.